Hey everybody, welcome to another solo meta showcase video where I take most of the solo activities in the game and show you the top meta current best builds for those activities. In this video, I'll be covering Corrupted Dungeons, The Mists, Solo Ganking, Solo Dungeons, Soloing Group PvE Activities, Open World Mob Fan Farms, and lastly, Soloing the Roads of Avalon. But real quick before we get into the video, if you want to help me out and keep these videos coming, feel free to support me extra by clicking join down below the channel or checking out my Patreon, the links are in the description. Starting us off with Corrupted Dungeons, the meta has been a little bit stale for a while now as sort of the top build has been the same for a very long time. Now there are tons of builds that are very good and that can work, but a really cheap, easy, and very popular, very strong build currently in the meta and has been top of the meta for a long time is this Cursed Skull build with the Hunter Hood, Mercenary Jacket, Soldier Boots, Martlock Cape, Healing Potions, and then Pure Mist Roast for a more expensive option, or just Beef Stews for a cheaper option. Alternatively, another build that has stood the test of time and has been meta for a very, very long time, it's still very good, is the Trinity Spear build with Hunter Hood now, Cleric Robe, Soldier Boots, Thetford Cape, Beef Stews, and Healing Potions. Both of these builds have very good win rates, they're very easy to play, they work both on Stalker or on Slayer Corrupted Dungeons, and almost most importantly, they have stood the test of time. These have been meta for a very, very long time, so if you're looking for something to spec up, chances are, even in the future, if they get nerfed a little bit, they'll still be pretty good for Corrupted Dungeons. Now, just to note, there is a lot of other builds that can work very well for Corrupted Dungeons, particularly Mists builds that are sort of starting to invade inside of Corrupted Dungeons and do quite well, uh, which we'll cover more in the next section. Taking a look at the newest solo activity on the block, the Mists, there are really two playstyles that are meta and that are highly suggested to play. You have Rats and Kings. Rats purely play for profit. They go in very low tier gear, very cheap setups, and they try to steal objectives away from other players. They try to third party fights and steal loot and steal kills. They're basically just there to get as much profit as possible without ever taking an honest 1v1. Kings, on the other hand, are almost the exact opposite. They go in with the absolute smacking best gear, 8.3, 8.4 on every piece of gear. They take every single objective in the mists and they kill anybody that tries to fight them, basically just beating them up with their higher IP. So looking at the meta builds within these two playstyles, first up are rat builds, and there's really two sort of variations of rat builds. Either have cheap damage builds that mainly try to third party and take kills, and then mobility builds that try to uh, just steal objectives and then run away. But that being said, there's no really set builds for rat builds. It's much more about the play style. So a lot of builds work very well. I'll give you some example ones, but really you can run sort of anything that fulfills the rat play style. So in terms of a rat build for the more cheap damage, trying to sort of third party fights and get kills, the one handed curse build here is probably the best one on the block with the one handed curse, torch for the offhand, hunter hood, cleric robe, soldier boots, beef stews, and then poison potions. For the more mobility style of rat builds, again, there's a lot of options, but here's an example one, double bladed staff, cloth cowl, really any cloth cowl works, you're just going to use the buff ability on it, and then either assassin jacket or guardian armor are probably the most two common armor pieces, minor work boots are basically a must, and then either sandwiches or omelets and invisibility potions. For the king playstyle, there are a lot of options, but they all sort of fulfill sort of similar items within their slots. So on helmets, it's almost always either a hunter hood or a fiend cowl. For chest piece, it's always either mercenary jacket, mistwalker jacket, or hellion jacket. For boots, it is always plate boots for that rejuvenating sprint ability. And then cape, it's either undead cape or thetford cape. And for weapon, there are a lot of options, but the top three right now are probably death givers, Carving Sword, and Bow of Badong. For food and potions, your potions are almost always going to be healing potions, and for the food, it really depends on the specific weapon that you're going with. Looking at the solo ganking meta, currently it is probably the most stale thing in all of Albion. I'm pretty sure every solo meta showcase I've done basically has had the same solo ganking meta. So I'm gonna go over this really quickly. It's still just the invisibility potion meta as mounts are way too tanky to reliably dismount as a solo player. 
you can try using this bear paw build if you really want to focus on dismounting players it's the only one that really still tries to and does have some success otherwise if you want to focus more on the sneaking up on people with invisibility the build is mostly as follows Really, the only number one thing that you need to have on every build is basically a fiend cow or some other way to perch their boots to make sure you stay on top of them after you get on top of them with invisibility, as almost always fiend cow. For weapon, the diversity is great. Really, anything with damage, damage and crowd control, or damage and mobility, any combination of those will do very well. For chest piece, it's usually either the assassin jacket for a little bit more versatility or the cleric robe for more damage. For boots, soldier boots are usually used on pure damage weapons like say the one-handed curse, whereas leather shoes with refreshing sprint are typically used for any of the damage plus crowd control or damage plus mobility weapons. Or lastly, you can also use any plate shoes for rejuvenating sprint if you want a little bit more fighting potential. For the cape, it's either Undead Cape for safety, Thetford Cape for damage, or Limhurst Cape for very mana-hungry builds. And then the food mostly depends on the weapon, but it's usually either omelets or stews. Looking at solo dungeons, the fastest clearing weapon is currently in the one-handed nature staff, closely followed by things like the light crossbow. I have done a video more dedicated on this if you want to check it out, and not much has changed since that time, so I'll link it down in the description if you want to learn more about sort of how to clear with this build and why it's the best. But in general, the build is going to be cultist cow for your helmet, druid robe for your chest piece, any leather shoes for refreshing sprint on your boots, crypt candle for your offing, pfeffer cape for your cape, poison potions or invisibility potions for either escaping or a little bit faster boss killing and then any regeneration food so abalone and beef stew is typically the best but you can also use soups or fish for a cheaper alternative Taking a look at soloing group PvE, so doing things like soloing group dungeons, or soloing the blue chests in the Avalonian roads, or soloing static dungeons, there's a lot of stuff you can do for solo group PvE, and different builds depending on what exactly you're trying to solo. So starting with our weapons, there's basically two focuses for doing solo group PvE. One is focusing on fame farming, doing big pulls, doing lots of mobs at a time, and then the other one is doing bosses and getting chests and stuff like that. For each of these options, there's sort of a weapon that is specialized for it, for doing a large pulls fame farming. The Great Nature Staff is very specialized for that sort of fame farming. And then for doing bosses, the Druidic Staff is very specialized for being able to kill very difficult bosses. That being said, there are also more generic options that do more damage that can do both of these faster if you have the higher IP to be able to do them comfortably. These would be the one-handed nature and the shadow color. So these two are more generic, can do both of them okay, but because they're not specialized for either activity, it's going to be a little bit harder and you're going to need a little bit higher IP. For offense, if your weapon gets one, on nature it's usually the torch and on the shadow collar it's usually the face breaker, although for offense it's not that important, a lot of options can work. For chess pieces, it's typically mercenary jacket if you're going for the bosses, or hellion jacket if you're going for the large pulls, or cultist robe for more generically high damage. However, just note if you're on the shadow collar, you have to go with a leather jacket, so either the mercenary jacket or the hellion jacket. For helmets, there's a lot of viable options. Starting off, we have Soldier Helmet. This is specifically usually two bosses to iframe very specific abilities that are very annoying to deal with. Then we have the Spectre Hood, which is a very generic, just double healing with your chest piece, so it's good for anything. And then Assassin Hood is very similar to the Spectre Hood, except it's even more generic and cheaper as it helps your other abilities as well, especially good for like resetting your E as well. For the boot slot, it's basically always Shoes of Tenacity. These provide a short cooldown and visibility to de-egger any of the mobs. It's very, very helpful when you're doing this group PvE stuff, especially if you're out in dangerous zones, helping you to deal with rats and just survive a little bit better. Looking at the cape, it's usually either the Limhurst cape if you are finding yourself needing more energy, or the Demon cape for just generically more damage. Looking at our food and potions, for potions it's poisons to help kill bosses faster or just invisibility again for a little bit more safety in those group areas, and then for food it's basically always pork roasts.
Looking at open world mob theme farming, the fastest build is defined by the holy trinity of spiked gauntlets, Thetford cape, and then any cloth robe with a high base damage percent. So for example, people usually go with either the cultist robe or the mage robe, although it really doesn't matter too much as the difference is only around 5% damage. The rest of your item slots aren't particularly important because you're not really going to be using them too much. Usually you're killing mobs within the 5 seconds so you don't really ever get to use your helmet or your boots, but some good options. Guardian helmet is typically a very good option for your helmet as it helps cleanse any bleeds and you can use it in an amount so it's very good for just staying safe in the open world. For your boots, really, since you're not going to be using them to kill mobs, usually you just want to go for some good escape boots, so something like demon boots, mercenary shoes, maybe even some soldier boots. Looking at food and potions, for our potions it's again either poison potions or invisibility potions depending on if you want some help killing bosses or if you want a little bit extra safety with invisibility potions. And then for food, this is actually pretty important for the build. You basically want to be able to one-shot mobs with your E or your QW combo and auto attack combo. So if you need a little bit of extra damage to do that, you're going to run beef stews or else you just want to run omelets for the shorter cooldowns. Last but not least, we have soloing the Roads of Avalon. Now for this, there's not too much of a meta. There's a lot of builds that can do this, so I'm just gonna give you what I think is probably the fastest clearing builds for these solo green chests. And as a bonus, this build will also be very good for killing any of the aspects in the roads. So for your weapon, you have the one-handed nature staff. On your offhand, go with the torch. For the chest piece, you can go cultist robe for more damage, faster clearing. However, if you are struggling a little bit, an easier but a little bit slower option would be the mercenary jacket. For your helmet, the soldier helmet can help against a lot of the bosses. The cultist cow will give you the most damage and fastest clearing though. Or you can go something like the guardian helm for a little bit safer clearing. For shoes, go with either leather shoes for refreshing sprints or cloth shoes for the energetic sprint. And then demon cape for your cape or undead cape if you want a little bit more safety. Uh, but just be careful on that one because you might reset on mobs by accident. And for food and potions, it's beef stews and then either poison or invisibility potions again. Okay, and those are the best builds for most solo activities in the game. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you do all the things you do to YouTube videos, and I will see you in the next one. Right in the